Okay, welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And uh, my voice may sound like super hits of the 70s today, but I'm going to push through this. Don't uh, don't take cold medicine and drink. It's probably not a good suggestion. They say that right on the bottle. Well, that's just that's a suggestion. Okay. That's that's not a like, you know. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll yeah, be fine. yeah, it'll be great. So, this beer uh, was brought to us by uh, by uh, Jamie. You brought us this one. I sure did. Yeah, there we go. Oh, look, she's got the microphone today. <laughs> she does. Yeah. Tell us tell us a little bit about this so you didn't go to the brewery, right? No, we did. You did go to the brewery. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this. So she should be in my place here. Is that, about. is that where the meet and greet thing was? Yes. So on Thursday, we went to Flagstaff to go snowboarding. Mm-hmm. I did not. I can't. But uh, we, uh, Amy Anderson and I, uh, compliance specialists, we went down to town to uh, do a little shopping. We saw at least two breweries down there, and it's not a big town. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we got back and everyone was ready to go, we heard that Mother Road was a good place to go. Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't even see that one. So there's at least three uh, just in that little area. Um, They are dog friendly, Mm -hmm. which was really cool. There were a couple dogs there. Uh, kind of small, but uh, they had tons of IPAs. <laughs> um, this one I just saw, and I know Rich likes IPAs, mm-hmm. and I liked the design. You know, from that creative mindset of mine, I thought the design looked cool and wanted to give it a try. What's the other side of the can look like? Oh, okay, cool, yeah. Very Art Nouveau. Yeah. Is that is that the right? Or even, yeah. Deco, maybe? Art Deco, that's what I'm looking for. It looks digitally drawn, which I like. Hmm. It reminds me of Palm Springs for some reason. Maybe just the trees, the palm trees. That's all I could see on the back, so that's what I was thinking. But So the beer today is from Mother Road Brewing Company. It's called Daily Driver, an IPA. It's a session IPA. They uh, So you can tell because it's a 4.8 That's right. By, by volume. And they kind of played into that with the name. Yeah, Daily right? driver yeah so it's like you can have one of these and you'll be totally fine you'll be totally fine uh it smells amazing it does really smell good here's so. a term for you the bouquet on the nose is very that, citrusy is that a beer term oh it's totally it yeah is it okay yeah I, I don't use it some people do but mm-hmm. i don't but i thought i'd throw it in there for I you i just assumed that was a wine term you know interchangeable things hmm. it's all liquid with alcohol in it it's wow that's it really does it's very mm-hmm. floral yeah is that that's not what you meant by bouquet? Yeah, is sure. it? Well, is not it? yeah. I mean, that's what it smells like. Mm. Yeah, it's very floral. All let's, right. let's give it a well, shot. Let's give this a shot. It actually tells you on the side the temperature it should be served at, the type of glass, and what it pairs well with. Well, we're gonna go zero for three on that. I'm guessing because it feels. Uh, I mean, unless it's cold, because that's what it is. So that's good. We got that going. Mm. Yeah. We have both have different types of glasses that we're drinking out of. At least they're not plastic. Yours is closer. It's tulip shaped yep. glass. I am closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what's what's it pair with? It pairs well with, and this works into kind of the time of year right now. Okay. Uh, blueberry buckwheat pancakes. All right. Not necessarily time of year on that one. Uh, Sonoran dogs, which is definitely a uh, Arizona thing. What's right? a Sonoran dog? That's a, the hot dog in Sonora. It, it's it's a hot dog in Sonora. That's okay. Look them up. It's like I, a Cody I've, dog. I've seen them before. All it, right. They're hot dogs with a bunch of stuff on them. Okay. And then here it is, fish tacos. That sounds like something that's up your alley. There you go. Enjoy tacos. this on a Friday, right? Mm. So, I, first drink. It's it's light. Yeah. It's Very definitely good. it's definitely light for a, for an IPA. I think it's really good. I would, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah. That just makes me want it to be spring. I know. Wishful drinking. <laughs> See what I did there? Ooh, that's a good, that was a good one. <laughs> I didn't even write it down. That's just <laughs> off the top of my brain today. <laughs> I was just going to make some bad joke about snow. But Don't worry, I did that for you. There you go. It was much better. Oh, boy. So, okay, so I can't wait to get in, because more than likely, your research has something to do with, with mine here. Okay. I'm, I'm going to guess you did some Route 66 research. You're right. There we go. So why did I guess that? Because this is on their website, and I think it was fun to read. I clip, I cut and pasted this whole thing out, so I'll just read the whole thing. This is directly off their website when it talks about who they are, the About Us section. This okay. is what it says. Driving on a dark stretch of two-lane road. The Marques family, Marques, I'm sure I'm just, I'm slaughtering that name. Again, that's, 
the Marquez family headed into the final stretch of their journey home, pondering how to better live their creed of finding joy in adventure. They came up with a plan to join their passion of craft beer, travel, Arizona, and the enjoyment of life. Founded was Mother Road Brewing Company. The Mother Road was the moniker given to the U.S. Highway 66 by Grapes of Wrath author John Steinbeck as he shared the story of the fictional Jode family who traveled the road in the hopes of trading desperation and heartache for hope and new beginnings. That sounds pretty good. Is that is that pretty close to what you did there? Yeah, I, I didn't know the um, the moniker was given in the book. I mean, that's I a classic either. high school story, right? Who didn't, movie. who didn't read Grapes of Wrath? Uh, well, I'm sure there was a couple kids in my class. I mean, they were supposed to. Jamie, did you read Grapes of Wrath? No. No, what? I didn't. Really? There's no. the answer. Sammy, did you? I did. See, Sammy did. I mean, so. I've read other classics. Yeah. Just, I, I did not read that one. You didn't read mm. Grapes of Wrath. They okay. weren't teaching at that time. Yeah, maybe not. There you go. Uh, goes to Tom Joad. You know that song? Yeah, Bruce Bruce Springsteen. Machine. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen. Well, they covered it. It's what? a Bruce Springsteen song. No, I hate to tell you. I don't believe you for one you second. You know how you know it's it's a Bruce Springsteen song? It's written really well. Mm. And so that's how you know it's not a Rage Against the Machine song. I was going to say, are you disparaging Rage Against I the Machine? I mean, I'm just saying Bruce uh, wrote it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, okay. In 1995, it came out. Uh, so that's the song, and it's about that family. Uh, basically, it's like an interpretation of the of kind of, of the book. So hmm. um, that's neither here nor there. I just okay. wanted to throw that out. Uh, here's some here's some fun stuff about Flagstaff, and then I'll get into the route. Okay, it is Route 66, right? We're not going to pretend it's route. It's not Route 66, good, because no. that's just that clunks off the tongue. Nah, that's, that's how I know it's wrong. Right. Uh, hey, you ever heard of Pluto, the planet? Well, it used to be. Is it again? Yes. It was discovered in Flagstaff. Really? Yeah, at the Lowell Observatory. Okay, that's pretty cool. They found a planet in this town. <sighs> But it, it is was, a small one. It was a planet, then it wasn't. So okay, I'll give it to it's him. It's hard to keep up. I'll give it to I, him. I, I grant you that. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, it is in the world's largest. This word is, is gonna be tricky. Contiguous. Yep. Ponderosa pine forest in the entire world. So that's a kind of tree. It grows at a certain elevation, uh, which is I wrote it down, I think, five thousand feet. Maybe 7,000 feet? I can't find it right now. Oh, 7,000 feet. The, that's where these trees grow. The Ponderosa Pine. Yeah. Okay. And that's where this, that's the elevation of Flagstaff. Okay. Uh, let's see here. It's got four season climate. Okay. Which I don't even think we can say that we have that here anymore. Mm, yeah. Um, 288 annual days of sunshine. That sounds pretty good. Why do we live in Nebraska? That's also a good question. Mm. Um hundred trains pass through this town every day. Okay. And 108 annual inches of snow. So you think we got it bad this year? Mm. That ain't nothing. No. Oh, yeah. The uh, the week before we got there, they said they got four feet. Feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Feet of snow. Yep. Some of the research I did, there's a uh, famous hotel there. It's called the Weatherford Hotel. And it was built, rebuilt in 1915 because uh, the winter before they got five feet of snow one one time, and it just crushed like a lot of the buildings in downtown. Like Flagstaff. caved in their yep. roofs or roofs. Yeah, roofs. So, yeah, Roof, roofs. 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 Roofs in the grooves. Okay. Five feet of snow. So that's a lot. That's a lot. I thought one foot was a bad snow. When we measure in inches here, and they measure in feet, that's a that's yeah. a difference. Yeah, we're not so tough. My friend Kay. Uh, in, in, in Case Lane, who, uh, who's been a legend in, in travel nursing, reminds me that she lives in, she's from Idaho. She lives in Idaho now, and, and they measure in feet there, not inches. And so we're weak. So like a half, half foot? Half foot. That's what they would say. We'd be like, we got three inches of snow. Yep. Hmm. I think a half foot is six inches. Um, good, good fact check. <laughs> Flagstaff, you know how the town got the name? I, I could venture some guesses, but... I feel like Jamie might know. No? Yeah? I don't. Okay. No. Okay. Your glass, where are you drinking from? I. What do you mean, how am I, how am I drinking it? Where did you get it? From Sam Adams. And that's in what town? Boston. Cool. Perfect tie-in. Okay. There are some people traveling from Boston, and they made it all the way out to Flagstaff. And on the 4th of July, 
1876, mm-hmm. allegedly, this is how the story goes. They were feeling patriotic because guess what? That's a hundred years. Yep. Country, right? Yes. They want to celebrate the birthday. Yep. What are they going to do? They want to raise a flag. There are no flagpoles. I don't even know if Flagstaff was a town at that time. Probably not. So what they did was they cut down a bunch of the branches off this tall ponderosa pine tree. Okay. And they ran a flag up it. Flagstaff. Flagstaff. Boom. It's, uh, that, I guess I would have ventured that guess, yes. Oh, that, okay. They put a flag on a tree. Yeah. Flagstaff. I mean, that's it. I mean, there could be a cooler story, but that's the one I found. I got to tell you, out of all the stories you've told, that one's probably the most anticlimactic of all of them. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it goes up from here. Okay. All right, we got that boring stuff out of the way. Hey, do you know about John Wayne? Heck yeah. The Duke? Yeah, the Duke. Yes. Right? Cowboy? Yep. Known for being synonymous with the West and the Western film. Absolutely. He liked Flagstaff, and he stayed there quite often. He stayed at the Hotel Monta Vista. Which is a historic hotel. Mm -hmm. And he stayed in room 210. That was the room he liked to stay in. Guess what? That hotel room is haunted as F. Really? you can say? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. um, He even had an encounter when he was staying there. One night, many times, someone knocked on his door. And and one time he said he heard the word um, room service. Now, this is not like Tommy Boy. Mm, not that whole not scenario. Not like that, no. Uh, he went out to the hall, because this is when rooms like this would happen, and people would bring you you know, ice or whatever. This, sure. This is, uh, I think it was in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Um, and he went out to the hallway, nobody there. Other people have said they've had the same encounter. They've, they've had the knock. They've heard the thing. Uh, a couple of times people have gone out to the hallway, and they've seen a guy... Uh, what they can tell is a guy in a red vest with some brass buttons, like an old school uh, bellhop or yeah. you know somebody that's working at the hotel. So they've had experience like an, uh, that tied up with John Wayne's an experience. An actual apparition. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So that's Hotel Monte Vista. Um, also, there's the Weatherford Hotel, which okay. is in right in the middle of downtown Flagstaff, from what I can tell. Um, looks like an old, historic, beautiful hotel. Okay. Also haunted. Uh, newlyweds, two newlyweds allegedly, these are how these ghost stories always go, uh-huh. uh, were killed on their wedding night in the 30s. And the last room where they were seen alive um, is the one that is being haunted, which I think was off the top of my brain. I think I wrote down number 54. So people have seen the ghosts of a woman in a wedding dress and uh-huh. a guy dressed up very fancy, and mm-hmm. you'll hear knocking and some stuff's moved around in that hotel. And then this one's kind of cool. It's called the Museum Club. Okay. And I thought, okay, that's a weird name, and I want to check it out. Also haunted, allegedly. Um, this thing was built in 1931 by this rich dude that lives down there, and he, um, as they did back then, did a lot of uh, hunting and safariing okay. and capturing game and, and stuffing them and mounting them, and had like a big, huge display of all these animals he yep. had you know, done. So he had so many that he needed a place to show off his collection of animals and weapons and Native American artifacts and all that sort of stuff. So he built this place. And then eight years later, it was sold and it became a nightclub. And it was called uh, the Museum Club. A lot of the taxidermy stuff stuck around. I think they had like 88 different animal species in the Hmm. building. And it's a really big um, building, I guess, enough that it has two different bars. And... um, the people that owned it and lived in it uh, had like an apartment above the club. Um, they lived there uh, until like the 70s, I think, and they both died. The wife fell down the stairs and broke her neck and died. And then the husband was so distraught about that, he killed himself. Oh. And their ghosts are supposedly still there. Mm-hmm. You'll hear them walking around. Um, they've seen a female person behind the bar. Somebody's tried to order a drink from the person. Uh, and they said, why is this person so rude? They wouldn't even turn around. So they went to the other bar and said, who's working back there? They're terrible. And they're like... That bar's not even open. There's nobody back there. Whoa. Uh, and another one was a guy saw a lady there, and he wanted to buy her a drink. She was sitting at a table by herself, and he mm-hmm. bought the drink and walked over to her, and then she was just then she was disappeared gone. right in front of him. That was it. I think if, you, if, if you're a hotel, if you're a historic hotel, you have to be haunted. You better be. Like, even yeah. if you're not, you Otherwise, say you are. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty boring. I think so. Right. But that's three of them that I found just in a little area of Flagstaff. So from what I could tell, one of them had a webcam that I could go and look at, which mm-hmm. was really cool. Yeah. It looks like a, a ghost town or like an old mining town or something you'd see in Colorado, 
that sort of vibe. Sure. Um, I've never been to Flagstaff, but I'd, just from seeing this, I'd love to stay in one of these. Almost reminded me of uh, Deadwood, South Dakota. Had that mm, kind of feel. Yep. Which is fun. That's a, If you've never been to Deadwood, like that's that's a trip. You should make that trip. That is a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. And there's enough other stuff to do around Deadwood that it just isn't that, right? There's there's a ton of other stuff yeah, to do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Up there. Interesting. Um, this place has been inhabited since the 1200s-ish. There was a group uh, called the Sanagua Indians, and they lived there in the 1200s. Uh, but then something happened. They had to take off, and that was some volcanoes erupted. Oh, uh, uh, and Arizona dis- volcanoes. Yeah, and dispersed them. I mean, that was, you know, 800 years ago, but that's how long there's been people in that area. Okay. Uh, Jamie mentioned the three or four breweries that she saw or heard of in Flagstaff. There are eight total that I could find. Wow. And they do this thing called a beer tour. And if you mm. go, there was on the website, you can print out this little, looks like a fake passport. Okay. And you go and you can get a beer from each one of those places. And if you get uh, a sticker from each one or a stamp on your passport, you take it back to the, the visitor bureau, and they give you a pint glass that has, like, some Flagstaff stuff on it. Oh. So I thought that was kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Um, Nebra- Lincoln has that. Actually, the whole state of Nebraska has one. Really? Um, it's a traveler's thing, and you, it gives you, like, coupons, okay. uh, free beers, and different things from different breweries all across the state. Hmm. I was out uh, Saturday for an hour. And I saw some people from like McCook were here in Omaha, and they had the book. So they had little uh, little passport book yep. or whatever it is. So it's kind of a fun thing if you're definitely in this area. I mean, there's eight of them, and they looked all looked pretty great. Interesting. So I looked up because I was super it's, after we read the can and stuff here. I looked up a Sonoran dog. Yeah, Sonoran dog is a hot dog wrapped in bacon, uh, buried beneath minced onion, green chili, diced tomato, pinto beans, mustard, and mayonnaise. I don't know about that. That's two things I can't can't do. But I could see how you would eat that with this beer. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that too. Absolutely. I think the bacon, just the bacon wrapped dog would be good with this. Mm-hmm. I would stop there. Just that. That's just for me though. Putting mayonnaise on a hot dog's weird. I'm not a mustard guy, but I know that's a traditional way. Hmm. I just don't like mustard. Not a mustard guy. Uh I've I don't know if I had like a past life trauma, like where I f- almost drowned in a vat of mustard or something at one point. I can't even look at it. I can't smell it. People at my what? previous employer, this guy I used to work with in the cube next to me, he yeah. knew this about me. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'd come back from work and he would have either mayonnaise or mustard. He would have taken one of those little packets mm. and squirted it on my phone. Oh. And then I, because you got phone calls all the time, what I used to do. Right. Uh, and I would have to like touch it. Oh. To answer the phone, he would know. Gross. That I would have to like smell mustard on the side of my phone. <laughs> Big uh, Who, gagging and was this Aaron Daly? This no, sounds like no. something he would do. No, he's way too nice for that. Oh, okay. okay. No, this is somebody else. My okay. past, past life. Mm, got you. So uh, that's what I got. That's not Highway sixty six related. Interesting. Um, well, let me. I'll, I'll hit on the brewery just yeah, a little bit, that. and then we'll go into the uh, we'll go into the routes the route sixty six. See what I did there. You know somebody rolls up to Sonic and says that. Can route. I have a Route 66? Give me a Route 66. Like, no. No. I think it's only, it's only Texas. Full price for you, sir. Mm, yeah, you, you don't get half price time. during no. happy, happy hour, Mm-mm. which I think is virtually all the time at Sonic anyway. It's yeah. always happy hour at Sonic. That's a good mentality to have, though. I think so, too. Okay, so two locations. Jamie, I think you were at the Downtown Brewery location. Does that sound about right? Downtown? That is correct. Downtown Brewery, Experimental Brewery and Tap Room. 7 South Mike's Place in Flagstaff. Closed Monday, Tuesday 2 to 9, Thursday 2 to 10, Friday and Saturday noon to 10, and Sunday noon to 9. The Butler Brewery location, which is the newer location, I believe, uh, is the production and tap room. So it's where all of the, they they do most of the brewing there and they do experimental stuff downtown or whatever, Mm. which makes sense. 1300 Butler Ave Suite 200 Flagstaff, Arizona. So more not downtown-ish. I'm assuming. Closed Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, 4 to 8. Friday, 4 to 9. Saturday, noon to 9. Sunday, noon to 8. Um, if you're interested at all, it's motherroadbeer.com or facebook.com backslash motherroadbeer. Uh, any any uh, thoughts on the untapped ranking? Do you have any guesses on this? On what this beer is? Yeah. Uh, oof. 776 so that's not, ratings. Oh, uh, man. That's not, that's a lot, but not a bunch. That's not a ton. It's, um, 
Let me take another. Mm. Let me take a critical drink this time. Okay. I I would I I was thinking about this as I have been have been drinking it. Yeah. This is important. Um I would go slightly under this, mm-hmm. but it's but it's good. Yeah. So how's that? Has does has that give you any indication? I would say at all? it's three point six four. Three point seven one. Wow. Pretty, pretty close. darn close. Yeah, pretty close. I was gonna go three and a half. Because yeah. it's 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 absolutely drinkable. It's absolutely drinkable, like daily mm-hmm. drinkable. Like yeah. It's, but it isn't like blow your socks off. Like, well, oh. here's the first thing that's going against it for you. It's not hazy IPA. That's true. So that's the first strike for you. You've absolutely learned my yeah. my my. It's uh, just beer an IPA, palette. but it's it's, it's super drinkable. It's very citrusy. I think uh, there's no harsh aftertaste nope. or afterbite, which a lot of times turns right. people off of standard IPAs. Mm-hmm. So you don't have that with this, and that's. Sometimes you'll see with um, session IPAs, sometimes they tend to get a little bit oniony, hmm. which is a weird descriptor, but it's totally true. It's almost it's just the way that the hops become almost overly bitter. Okay, um, it almost comes off as like a green onion or onion aftertaste, oh. and you'll drink those and you'll know right away that like, that ain't for me. Yeah, so that's that's one of the th- the traps you'll find sometimes with a session IPA. I honestly expected more of a West Coast IPA style out of this. Yeah. The more malty kind of style, but not, yeah. and I was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't. Yeah. I mean, it's just a good standard, not not piney IPA. I like it. So tell me about Route 66. Well, here's what I found out. First of all, kind of like what we were talking about with Pluto, like it's hard to uh-huh. know where we stand with this. Sure. How this road has changed and all this, um, it, tr- it starts back in 1857. Right, so wow. the U.S. government wants to go west, as we know. That's how the history of this country worked, and they decided that they would build a wagon road for people to move their stuff. Um, and they also, second part of this, they wanted to be able to get stuff and supplies southwest. That was the main objective. The second objective was the government wanted to test to see if camels were a good pack animal to use in the southwest. Because really? they needed to move all this stuff. Okay. So they were trying to figure out what animals would work uh, to do the work uh, for them to use. So that, that was the second version or the reason to do this like exploratory thing. So it, it would be easier to import camels than maybe just use than donkeys, like donkeys or, or horses? Or, yeah, or oxen or whatever they end up using. Okay. Apparently it didn't stick because I don't. Mm. there's no history that I know of of you know, camels hanging out down in the, no. in the desert there. No. Um, it officially started in Chicago uh, when it was paved. Uh, you hit on one of the names for the road, which was the Mother Road, mm-hmm. um, Route 66. It's also been known as the Will Rogers Highway. He, I think, was the Singing Cowboy is what his nickname was. Yes. And uh, the reason he's tied into it, I thought was interesting. Uh, after it was mostly paved, um, you could connect from Los Angeles all the way to Chicago, and then from there you could get to New York City. Okay. So to promote the road, which is a weird thing that we'd even think about now, sure. but that was the that had never happened in this country, they had a road race, like a running race, and people ran from Los Angeles to New York City on the road. And oh. then they had like celebrities and dignitaries and government folks meeting people along the way, and the most famous person was Will Rogers. That's that's the best they could come up with was well, he was at the time I guess he's like okay. the biggest celebrity in the whole in the whole country at that right. time because he's okay. got his radio show and he's in some movies sure um, and that style of music is very popular so right. he was he's like the Brad Pitt of just I just let that lay out there he's the Brad Pitt of the times so. all right so he showed up and uh, that's one of the reasons that they call it that. Otherwise, Main Street of America is another thing you'll hear. I've heard that as well, yes. So it starts in Chicago, and it goes through, and it's currently, you cannot do this anymore. You cannot trace the path of Highway 66, because it's, um, from what I understood, road and engineering technology got so much better that uh, they changed the road to go faster. There's faster ways to get between places, right? So maybe... 50 years ago, they thought, okay, well, we'll just make a big loop around this. Yep. And now technology is like, well, we can just go straight there. So the road, the design of the road has changed almost like a river. Okay. What a map of it looked like in 1925 
It is not that anymore. Do they have like parts of the original road still? Parts of the original road are still around. Okay. And what you were reading off of that thing about said it two lane road and all yep. that, yep. that's total B. <laughs> that's like when it was first built, it wasn't even 10 feet wide. It was nine feet wide. Oh, wow. So it's basically one lane worth and it had a, a shoulder on both sides. So if somebody was coming at you, you just got off the sh- onto the shoulder, and then you got back on the road. Okay. And there's a couple of sections, of, from what I could tell, in Texas that are still that way, and a little bit of New Mexico where it's just a single lane that you actually can drive on, oh. um, and it's marked um, so you know what you're getting into, basically. It's historic or whatever, and then, yes. Yeah, so it okay. has that designation now um, of the you'll, – you'll see this sometimes, especially in the mountains, mm-hmm. a national scenic byway. Yes. So that's something that I did some research on because um, after, uh, let's see, it would have been 1955, 1956, um, Dwight Eisenhower, I think, was the president. And he was like, highways, thing of the past, interstates. We need interstates. Yes. And they pushed for the whole uh, U.S. to be interstate-ized and highways became um, – the back roads, basically. So 1940s. Right? Yes. And like a lot of towns, tons of towns and industries and jobs and everything was tied to that highway, to Highway 66. And a lot of that business was lost when the interstate came because mm-hmm. then you didn't go through those tiny towns. And that's still a case to this day. True. In Nebraska, even. Yep. Um, you can take the interstate or you could take, like, let's say Highway 6. You can still get to Lincoln from Highway 6. You go through some small towns right. that you don't even see on the interstate. Right. And that's where a lot of the, the businesses and stuff have dropped off. Huh. Same was true for this road. In the 1990s, um, I think it was, yeah, 85 it was removed. They, they didn't call it Route 66 anymore. It's not the Highway Association doesn't do that anymore. 1991, they bring up something called the National Scenic Byway. And for a road to be um, nominated this or to be called this, it has to have one of the six, these six things. It has to have some sort of archaeological, cultural, historic, natural, recreational, or scenic uh, reason you'd want to go on that road, basically. Okay. So it's trying to preserve some history. You're going to see something cool, um, whatever. It's got some sort of natural element um, that, you know, a natural wonder or something like that. Then it can be designated that. So that's what this is now considered. Gotcha. And... There still are parts of the road you can drive. Um, you can trace it. You can still make the drive from L.A. to Chicago. Um, you just have to really pay attention to your GPS is what it said, basically. Like oh. a lot of sudden turns here or there. Yep. You can get on current parts of the road that haven't even been touched. Like some of that stuff, that single lane stuff, have never been re asphalted or whatever. It's still the, the same, yeah. same road it was back in the yep. day. So that's still hanging out there. Interesting. This sounds like something a parent would do to a kid when they're younger, and then the kids would just be bored to shit. Though. Oh, yeah. It would be a trip that your grandpa would take you on uh, in the station wagon in the yep. 80s. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and you have air conditioning, but he wouldn't use it, and you'd have to have the windows down. Windows down. And then you're sitting in the back with no seatbelt mm-hmm. on. and yep. Yeah, for sure. Listening yeah. to Glass Tiger. I did that. Yes. Remember that band? They were two-hit wonder. I do remember that band. Yeah. Um, here's the states it goes through back then. Started in Illinois. Goes through Missouri. It hits Oklahoma. It hits Texas. It hits New Mexico, Arizona, California. Hits your state, Kansas. Kansas, yeah. How many miles of highway of Route 66 are in Kansas? Oh, I would think not very many. 13. Yeah. 13 miles. It just cuts up through the, the one corner, right? Yeah. I yeah. said there was three small towns on the path, yep. and otherwise it went back through. Well, there's not a whole lot to see there anyway. They kind of just hit the highlights already in the 13 miles? Eh, I wouldn't even call it that, but... They just, it's kind of an also ran, right? Oh, it's Kansas too. Okay. There you go. So, yeah, all the other states had like 200 to 500 miles of road in Kansas at 13. Hmm. So, that's that's what I know. I'm somehow not surprised by that, though. I think it's a big, it's like a big pop culture touchstone, especially for like oldies, oldies radio. Yes. um, Because all that stuff happened in the 50s Mm -hmm. and really vacations were happening, like post war, people were coming back. And had money and some time, and they would take vacations, and they would drive on stuff, and like having an automobile was like a huge deal, you know? Well, because you, you were driving everywhere. You mm-hmm. weren't flying anywhere. Yeah. It's, you, were, you were packing in the station wagon and going. I definitely wish I was around for this time frame. I would have loved to have driven this route in the, in the heyday, yep. stopped at those little mom and pop shops, restaurants. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, along the route, I did find some cool stuff. Uh, let's see here. 
Oh yeah. Okay. This was um, the first ever drive-through restaurant was on this route. Like an actual drive-through, not like a Sonic. Like right. You, okay. And it was, I think it was in 1940. Oh. It was called Red's Giant Hamburg. They don't even call it a hamburger. Hamburg. It's Red's Giant Hamburg in Springfield, Missouri. Okay. Which there's some good breweries down in Springfield, Missouri. Yes, there are. And it ends up. The first McDonald's is at the end of this thing in San Bernardino, California. Oh. So it's got some food tie-ins. So not the the actual McDonald's, not the uh, not the Ray Kroc McDonald's from... Did you ever watch that show? Did you the ever movie? Watch the Founder? With Michael Keaton? Uh-huh. I haven't seen it. Was it good? You should watch it. Okay. It's interesting. It's an interesting take on... Ev- I mean, everybody's eating McDonald's. Yeah, Everybody. for sure. Interesting uh, in, on how that all came about. But that's... Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um. Here's something that's also kind of a movie tie-in. I want to see if you can get the movie I'm okay. talking about. But um, there's a restaurant. It's still around, from what I can tell. It's called The Big Texan in Amarillo, Texas. Mm. And they would give you a free 72-ounce steak if you could eat it in an hour. The Great Outdoors. Exactly. Yeah. The old 96er. That's right. Yes. So that's, that's something that they actually used to do to get people to come in off the highway and stop at the restaurant and try the food challenge. So the food challenge has been around for at least 60 years. Because that was in the fifties that started. He ain't done yet. <laughs> That's for sure. If you if you are not familiar with the Great Outdoors, you oh. definitely should watch that film. It's an underrated gem. That sounds like something that Jamie should do on her podcast for uh, on Atlas Now Streaming. I'll add it to the list. Add it to the list. <laughs> oh. Check. Yes, it's going to be so good. Oh, that'd be awesome. Hmm. Excellent. Great, might, John Candy. Great. I might have a VHS copy of that. Oh, yeah. That's old, that's classic right there. That's classic. Last movie I could tie us to. Okay. Cars. Oh. Disney's Cars. Cars, yeah. The initial one. It's kind of, basically, the town was hopping and popping back in the day, and then Route 66 was closed, and now it's a ghost town and yep. forgotten, and old Lightning McQueen shows up and mm. brings some some highlights back to the city. With Mater. With Toe Mater. Yeah. Yep. Who was uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Yep. Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska native. I would listen to Larry the Cable Guy when I first moved to Omaha. Before he was oh, yeah. popular, On the he radio, would yeah. yeah he'd call into the uh, one hundred and one The Edge, yep. one hundred and one nine The Edge, which was a was a heavy it was a like modern rock station yeah. or whatever. And they were so excited when he would call in. When Larry the Cable Guy would call yeah. in, and he would do his little shtick, and yep. And then he got huge. And then he got famous. I know, isn't that weird? For just yeah. And now he has a little recording studio that he goes to and does his car's voice, Tomater voice, <laughs> and uh, can do it from anywhere. He's and I can like do it anywhere. Traveling, traveling voice over production stuff with him all the time. Nice. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that's what I know. I, I have never been there. I've never really wanted to go. It was never on my radar. Uh, but after learning this and just seeing the hotels and the, the old downtown district stuff, it's definitely something I want to check out, but not in the wintertime. No. Well, I would go right now just mm. based on our weather versus their weather. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you know what Jamie was saying, that she can't snowboard? I can't mm. either, but probably for different reasons, but mm. I, there's no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I have a feeling I would hurt myself. Yeah. Not like Steve Ryan hurt myself where I would tear something, mm. but I would hurt myself enough that I wouldn't be able to do At it At least anymore. a sprain. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Jamie, thank you for bringing this beer back. This was... Uh, yeah, you're welcome. This was really good. You know, I, I had to save myself one for mm-hmm. a few months from now. It so. should last, right? I mean, it's a, it's an IPA. Yeah, so. As long as it's cool, it'll be good. Yeah, a couple months, you'll be fine. I just stocked it in the back of the fridge and I'm going to put a note on it, make sure nobody drinks it. Although my husband doesn't really drink IPAs, so I think well, I'm good. you should be fine then. <laughs> so, all right. Okay, next week, uh, I want to... I think we want to. I, I don't, actually, I don't know what next week is. I don't. I need to go back and look at the schedule. Yeah, we've got we've got a couple more IPAs, and I know that's that's probably not a super popular style for a lot of our entry level. Yeah, maybe I was going to say on on the overall global scale, it's the style. Like that's the most popular style. Mm. But maybe for you know novice folks, right. it's not. It's not, not the one. It's not the right. It, it's not. But maybe if you hear us talk about them enough. You'll give them a shot somewhere and, yeah. and, and try them out. For sure. I I mean, I, I don't know. It it would take, take a pretty bad one for me not to at least say I liked it and drink mm, it. True. All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>